a very good evening aspirants i have an important announcement for you this is regarding pre stoming batch 4 the orientation for this batch is already concluded but the first test will going to commence on december 21st only those who wish to register in this batch click the link provided in the description now with this happy note let's move on to the hindu news analysis for the date 15th of december 2022 and displayed here are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today you can go through it now without any delay let's get into the article discussion have a look at this news article this news article talks about the interstate water dispute it is about the dispute between tamil nadu and karnataka over constructions on the pennaya river the news is that yesterday the supreme court gave the center three months time to constitute an interstate river water disputes tribunal and this is to resolve the dispute between Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. And this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us discuss about the Interstate River Water Disputes Tribunal. See, according to Article 262, Class 1 of the Indian Constitution, the Parliament may pass laws to resolve disputes or complaints regarding river water sharing. And it is about the usage, distribution, or control of transboundary waters in a river or river valley. So, under the Article 262, Class 1 of the Indian Constitution, the Parliament has enacted the Interstate Water Dispute Act 1956. And under this Act, the states can approach the centre to constitute a tribunal. Here, the tribunal is for solving interstate water disputes through consultations. To say in simple words, the Interstate Water Dispute Tribunal is to be established to settle the disputes on the water sources between the states. See, the interstate water disputes arise when two or more states disagree about the usage, distribution and management of rivers flowing through two or more states. And this interstate water disputes are a persistent problem to federal water governance in India. Here, you can take the example of Kaveri water dispute and the satellite Yamuna link canal dispute. So, to resolve these kinds of disputes, the interstate river water tribunal should be established. Now, what about the composition of the tribunal? See, the tribunal shall consist of a chairman and two other members. Know that they are all nominated by the Chief Justice of India from the judges of the Supreme Court or High Courts. Now, moving on to see when does a tribunal can be constituted. See, when any request is received from any state government in respect of any water dispute and the central government is of opinion that the water dispute cannot be settled by negotiations, then the central government shall constitute a tribunal. And note that it should be constituted within one year from the date of receipt of such request from the states. And the tribunal is to be established by the notification in the official gazette. And this tribunal helps in the adjudication of water dispute. Here you have to note one thing, the water disputes that are settled before the Interstate Water Disputes Amendment Act 2002 will not be reopened. Now moving on to see what does the tribunal do after its constitution. See the tribunal shall investigate the matters referred to it. Then it will forward to the central government a report. This report will consist of the facts as found by the tribunal and the decision of the tribunal on the matters referred to it will also be given in that report itself. Note one point here, after the consultation of tribunal, the tribunal has to submit the report within a period of three years. But during unavoidable situations, the central government can extend it for a period which should not be more than two years. And if the corresponding state government needs explanation of any decision taken by the tribunal, it can ask for the explanation within three months from the date of submission of the report. But if the decision of the tribunal is published by the central government in the official gazette, then the decision shall be final and binding on the parties to the dispute, that is the two states. Thus, the decision of the tribunal after its publication shall have the same force as an order or decree of the Supreme Court. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw about interstate river water disputes tribunal, then about its composition, then when does a tribunal can be constituted. And finally, we saw about some of the functions of Interstate River Water Dispute Tribunal. See, this topic is very important for your both preliminary and mains exam because this is evergreen topic we would hear often in news. So, make note of each and every points that we discussed in this article. 
Now with these key points in mind, let's move on to the next news article discussion. See this news article here. This news article talks about a debate that happened in the parliament. See the debate is regarding the inclusion of two communities in the scheduled tribes list. The Union Tribal Affairs Minister kicked off this discussion on the Constitution Scheduled Tribe Order Bill 2022. Actually, this bill seeks to include two communities, namely the Narikarawar and Kurivikarar, to the ST list. And this is the crux of the news article given here. Now, in this discussion, we will learn about the criteria that are needed to include certain community in ST list. And we will also learn about the process of inclusion or exclusion of communities in the ST list. First of all, who are the scheduled tribes? See the term scheduled tribes first appeared in the constitution of India. Then which article is defining scheduled tribes? See article 366 class 25 is defining the scheduled tribes. And what it is saying? It says that the tribes are tribal communities or parts or groups within such tribes or tribal communities which are notified under article 342 are deemed to be scheduled tribes. And this is for the purpose of the constitution. In simple words, the communities which are notified under Article 342 of the constitution are deemed to be scheduled tribes. And know some facts here. See the scheduled tribes constitute 8.6 percentage of the population of India. Also there are over 500 tribes which are notified under Article 342. Now with this background, we will learn about the criteria that are needed to include certain community in a ST list. See, presently there are five criteria that are to be followed for specification of a community as a scheduled tribe. They are, firstly, indications of primitive traits, secondly, distinctive culture, thirdly, geographical isolation, fourthly, shyness of contact with the community at large, and finally, backwardness. Know that these criteria are not spelled out in the constitution, and they are provided by the government time to time. This is about the criteria. Now we will see about the process of inclusion or exclusion of communities to the ST list. See the process begin from the state government. Firstly, the state government identifies the communities which are to be included or excluded from the scheduled tribe list. Know that the identification should be based on the five criteria that we have discussed. After the identification of communities, the state government make recommendations to the Union Tribal Affairs Ministry and this is by sending the identified list. Then the Ministry of Tribal Affairs reviews the list and sent it to the Registrar General of India for approval. Once approved by the Registrar General of India, the proposal is then forwarded to National Commission for Scheduled Tribes. And following the approval of National Commission of Scheduled Tribes, the proposal is sent back to the Union Government. Then after due deliberations, the Union Government introduces the list in the Union Cabinet and this is for final approval. Know that the final decision on the list is made by cabinet only. After the approval of the union cabinet, a bill will be introduced in the parliament. And that bill seeks to amend the constitution scheduled tribes order 1950. Know that amendment in the constitution scheduled tribes order 1950 is needed to include or exclude the communities from the ST list. And that's why a bill has to be introduced in the parliament. Once the bill is passed by both the Lok Sabha and Rajabha, then it will be sent to the president office for the assent of the president. And once the bill got the president's assent, then the president's office issues a notification specifying the changes in the ST list which is under article 342. So this is how a certain communities are included or excluded to the ST list. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw about who are scheduled tribes and they are nothing but the communities which are notified under article 342 are deemed to be scheduled tribes and we will also saw about five criteria that are needed to include certain community in ST list and finally we saw about the process involved in the inclusion of communities to the ST list. See this topic is very important for your prelims exam so make note of each and every point that we have discussed in this article. Now with these key points in mind let's move on to the next news article discussion. Have a look at these three news articles. This first article is talking about the nine products which have got GI tag. Then the second article talks about Beipur Uru. See the Beipur Uru is a type of boat from Kerala. See the makers of this boat are seeking GI tag. And this third article talks about Tandur Red Gram which also got GI tag recently. 
this is the crux of the news articles given here in this context let us learn about the products that have got ji tag and we will also learn about beipur uru and tandoor red gram first of all what is a geographical indication tag see geographical indication is an indication to identify agricultural natural or manufactured goods that originates from a definite geographical territory and for those goods only ji tag is given now if you take the manufactured goods it should be produced or processed or prepared in that territory itself and it should have a special quality or reputation or other characteristics so only if these conditions are met then only the manufactured goods are given ji tags some of the examples of ji tagged products are darjeeling tea tirupati laddu kangra paintings nagpur orange kashmir pashmina shawls etc the geographical indication see the name conveys an assurance of quality and distinctiveness and this is essentially attributable to the place of its origin see geographical indications are part of our rich culture and collective intellectual heritage then they also supplement the incomes of our rural farmers weavers artisans and craftsmen across the country note that these geographical indications are covered as an element of intellectual property rights and this intellectual property rights comes under the paris convention for the production of intellectual property then geographical indications are also covered under trade related aspects of intellectual property rights that is the trips agreement see the trips was part of the agreements which was concluded on the uruguay round of general agreement on tariffs and trade negotiations now coming to india in india geographical indication tags are issued as per the geographical indications of goods registration and protection act of 1999 know that this tag is issued by the geographical indication registry which is functioning under the department of industrial promotion and internal trade know that this department comes under the ministry of commerce and industry now with this basic understanding now let us see about the three news articles one by one now first let's take up this first news article this article mentions that nine products from across the country got ji tag recently now let us see what are those nine products and we will also see where they belongs first is the gamosa of assam see gamosa is a hand woven rectangular piece of cloth here the cloth is with red border in different designs and motifs this is about the first product then the second product is alibag white onion know that this is from maharashtra then the third is the ladakh rakshe karpo apricot know that it is one of the sweetest varieties of apricots in the world and the fourth one is attapadi aattukumbu avara see this is a type of bean belongs to kerala and the fifth is attapadi tuvara it is a type of red gram and also it is an important traditional crop of the attapadi tribal area know that this also belongs to kerala then the sixth product is kandalur vattavada velutulli see it is a type of garlic and this also belongs to kerala and the seventh one is kodungalur pottu velari know that it is a type of melon and it is also from kerala and the eighth product is onattu kara yellu see it is a type of sea same and this also belongs to kerala and finally the ninth product is the tandoor red gram this belongs to telangana this is about the nine products which i have got j tag recently and this is about the first news article now let us see about the second news article see this news article here talks about the kerala's legendary beipur uru the news is that the district tourism promotion council of kolikod has applied for a j tag for the famous beipur uru see the beipur uru is nothing but a boat See, it is a wooden ship or sailing boat or sailing vessel, and it is handcrafted by skilled artisans and carpenters in Beipur, Kerala. It is said that these Beipur urus are a symbol of Kerala's trade relations and friendship with the Gulf countries. And if you see the urus, they are purely made of premium wood without using any modern techniques. Know that the wood used to build the uru is still sawed in the traditional way. and this method requires immense expertise it takes around 1 to 4 years to build each uru and note that this entire process is done manually this is all about the second news article now let us see about the third news article see this news article talks about the tandoor red grams of telangana 
this we saw in the first article itself right now we will see the features see the ji application has been filed by the elal farmers producers company limited and the ji registration process was facilitated by telangana state agricultural university now we will see briefly about this tandoor red gram see this tandoor red gram is a local variety of pgnp and it is manually grown in the rain fed tract of tandoor and nearby region of telangana see the fertile deep black soil with huge deposits of clay mineral huge limestone deposits can be attributed to the specific quality of tandoor red gram know that the tandoor red gram contains about 22 to 24% protein which is almost 3 times that of protein content in cereals then it has good taste better cooking quality as well as enhanced storage quality and this is all about tandoor red gram and that's all regarding this news article discussions this discussion firstly we saw about the nine products which have got j tag recently and secondly we saw about baipur uru and some of its futures and finally the third news article we saw about tandoor red gram see the ga tagged products is very much important for your prelims exam as nowadays upsc is asking more questions related to ga tagged products so try to remember all the products and where it belongs to it will be very much useful for your prelims exam now with these key points in mind let's move on to the next news article discussion now for our next discussion we are going to take this news article it says that scientists in the united kingdom have tested a new form of cancer therapy in a teenage girl the girl was affected with a form of cancer called t cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia and as per the article the test has resulted in a success so in this context let us understand what is t cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia and about the new form of cancer therapy treatment but before getting into discussion the syllabus relevant to this topic is given here for your reference kindly go through it now let us start our discussion by seeing the t cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia so what happens in this form of cancer see t cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia is a form of blood cancer and in this form of blood cancer the t cells turn against the body and destroy the healthy cells that help with immunity see t cells are nothing but a class of white blood cells which are equipped to hunt and neutralize threats to the body know that the blood cancer is rapid and progressive and they are usually treated by chemotherapy and radiation therapy and this is all about t cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia now coming to the teenage girl who received the treatment as per the article a teenage girl named alicia was diagnosed with t cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia as per the news from bbc she tried standard treatments like chemotherapy and radiation but these methods had only limited success and after this she enrolled in the trial testing of an experimental medicine so alicia was the first to receive experimental gene therapy that relied on a new technique called base editing here you should understand what is base editing now if you want to know about base editing you should know about the basics see a person's genetic code is several permutations of four bases the four bases include adenine guanine cytosine and thymine and the sequences of these bases only form genes see this image here like this only genes are formed with a sequence of these four bases that is adenine thymine guanine and cytosine and we all know genes serve as the instructions to produce proteins that are necessary for the body's functions now in alicia's case her t cells had become cancerous this might be because of a misarrangement in the sequence of bases think about this now if we find a way to correct this misarrangement then she would have a healthier immune system this misarrangement can be corrected by a technique that allows gene to be altered so this means that the errors in the bases will be fixed and the most popular among these approaches was crispr cas9 system see this crispr cas9 system consists of an enzyme that acts like molecular scissors see in this method a piece of dna is cut at a precise location after this a guide rna is used to insert a changed genetic code at the sites of incision and this is how genes are altered using crispr cas9 system know that crispr cas9 system is the fast most versatile system for gene editing also do you know 
this crispr cas9 system is inspired from bacteria see bacteria use this technique as a defense mechanism against viral infections now coming back to the article as per the article david liu of the board institute improvised on the crispr cas9 system it is said that the improvisation in the method will be able to directly change certain bases so this means that after the improvisation in crispr cas9 system the cytosine can be changed into guanine and thymine can be changed into adenine and this only is called as base editing know that this base editing is very effective in treating blood disorders especially those disorders which are caused by single point mutations or when a change in single base pair causes terminal disease so far we saw what is base editing now we will see how this base editing worked in the trial see in the case of t cell leukemia the objective was to fix the immune system it should be fixed in a way that it stops making cancerous t cells so firstly healthy t cells are extracted from a donor and a series of edits are made to this t cells know that the first base edit blocked the t cells targeting mechanism this is done to stop the t cells from attacking alicia's body and the second edit removed a chemical marking called cd7 know that this chemical marking will be on all t cells and the third edit prevented the cells being killed by a chemotherapy drug and finally the t cells are programmed to destroy the cancerous cells which have cd7 marked on it all these edits were done and after a month she was given a second donor transplant this was done to regrow the immune system that contains healthy t cells now you may have a doubt whether her cancer cell will come back or not as per the article it is to be established that whether the treatment entirely fixes the immune system or not nevertheless it is a big breakthrough right so i thought you should know about this see in prelims you may expect a question as simple as which of the following statements best suits the term base editing at that time you should know that it is a technique which involves the direct editing of alteration of bases in dna and you can even code this technique in your main sensor whenever needed and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about t cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia which is nothing but a form of blood cancer and we will also learned about a new gene editing technique called base editing and finally we saw about the working of base editing technique now with these key points in mind let's move on to the next news article discussion now have a look at this text and context page article this news article talks about the decline in india's exports here the article is specifically talking about the decline in exports in october month and the decline was about 16.7 percentage now this is a concern because this is the first slide reported since february 2021 So in this backdrop let us understand some of the important points mentioned in the news article. Now let's start with the question whether this export decline is just a temporary one or whether it is going to set a permanent trend. See the answer to this question is time. Yes, we have to wait and watch to determine it is a permanent trend or not. See the author in this news article cites many reason for export decline. Now let me give you example for better understanding. The first example is with respect to engineering goods. The engineering goods sector includes metal products, industrial machinery and equipment, automobiles and their components, transport equipment, bicycles, medical devices and renewable equipment. Even though it provided a strong backbone for India's goods exports, this sector has declined 21 percentage in recent years. Here the Engineering Export Promotion Council of India explains some of the reasons for the decline of engineering goods this includes high inflation in developed regions then falling demand in china then slow down in the european union and the us and finally the russia ukraine war and this is about the first reason for export decline and the second notable decline was seen in the steel and allied products sector see the steel sector saw a decline of 2 billion us dollars worth of exports in october The reason for this particular decline was not external but internal. Yes, the decline was caused by the imposition of an export duty on these products. See, the government imposed the export duty to help increase local availability of these products and as a result to moderate local prices. The Commerce Ministry also stated that 
the tendency of workers to take leave during the diwali month also affected output since all these reasons pertain to change with time the author says that we cannot conclude this export decline as a permanent trend but here the happy news is that despite slowing exports the local demand is constant it is even expected that the local demand will re-energize the investment cycle which in turn stimulates growth and job creation in the coming days see the increased private sector capital expenditure is also favoring the situation see yesterday only we saw about capital expenditure right now recall what it is capital expenditure is nothing but the funds used by a company to acquire upgrade and maintain physical assets such as property plants buildings technology or equipment so the increased private sector capital expenditure is a positive signal for the indian economy since private capital expenditure is typically reliant on credit or loans from the banking system the banking system have also seen a healthy growth in the recent past last month the banking sector reached a high growth of 18 percentage this is about the export trend in india now moving on to see about the foreign exchange reserves see if exports decline there are also high chances for the foreign exchange reserves to decline that is why we are looking at it as on december 2 foreign exchange reserves of india stood at about 561 billion us dollars now if we take october imports at 56.7 million us dollars as a benchmark then we have roughly about 9 to 10 months worth of import cover only this is not a good sign right because even during the pandemic we had 14 to 15 month import cover and this is the current scenario of exports in india and we have to wait and watch what will happen in the future and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about the reasons for export decline in india and we also saw about the foreign exchange reserves of india now with these key points in mind let's move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this news article the news is that the president of india draupadi murmu is planning to visit ramappa temple during her four day visit to the state of telangana now in this backdrop let us learn about ramappa temple in prelims perspective see the rudreshwara temple which is otherwise known as ramappa temple is located in the state of telangana it was constructed in the year 1213 ad during the reign of kakatian empire it was built by re charla rudra who was the general of the famous kakatian king ganapati deva see the presiding deity to which the temple is devoted is ramalingeshwara swami here note that ramalingeshwara swami is form of lord shiva so we can say that this temple is dedicated to lord shiva note one point here the construction of this temple nearly took 40 long years this is a brief about rudreshwara temple now let's see some architectural details of rudreshwara temple see the temple complexes of kakatiyas have a distinct style technology and decoration these features are exhibiting the influence of the sculptor see this image here the ramappa temple stands on a raised platform and the star shaped raised platform is nearly 6 feet high with walls and above the platform the pillars and ceilings were built then the hall in front of the sanctum has numerous carved pillars that have been positioned to create an effect that combines light and space wonderfully know that this temple is named after the sculptor ramappa the ramappa was the mastermind behind the temple see the naming of this temple making it the only temple in india to be named after its craftsman see the european merchants and travelers were mesmerized by the beauty of the temple and one such traveler had remarked that the temple was the brightest star in the galaxy of medieval temples of the deccan apart from its historical cultural religious and architectural splendor ramappa temple has a special technological feature called sandbox foundation see this foundation only helped the temple to stand tall all these years now let's see briefly about sandbox technique sandbox foundation is a type of foundation involving digging of the earth at least 3 meters deep and later getting it filled with sand and it is reinforced by gravel and other material later huge structures are built on the sand foundation here the utility of sand filled foundation is that it acts as a cushion or shock absorber when earthquake occurs thus it prevents 
vibrations in the main structure and protects it from falling. And this is all about the sandbox technique on which the Ramapa temple was constructed. And that's all regarding this discussion. Through this discussion, we have learned about Ramapa temple and its architectural details, including the sandbox technique. Now, with these key points in mind, let's move on to the next news article discussion. Now, take a look at this text and context page article. It talks about the history of two Asian Jains, that is China and India. Here, the history spans from the second half of the 20th century to the present day. The article also discusses about the future prospects of these two nations in the wider global order. See, this article was published on August 15, 2022 and today it has been republished in the Hindu following the clashes involving Chinese and Indian army in the border areas of Arunachal Pradesh. Now, in this context, through this discussion, let us see the points discussed in the article. Firstly, we will see about the formative years of both the countries. Secondly, we will see about the economic progress of China with respect to India and also about the lessons India need to learn from China. And finally, we will see about the author's view of how the relationship between India and China will be in the future years. Now, before getting into discussion, the syllabus relevant to this topic is given here for your reference. Kindly go through it. Now, let's get into the discussion. See, the article begins with a comparison of population of India and China. If you had been following news continuously, you will know that the global population had finally reached 8 billion. As per the current population data, China is the most populous country followed by India. But this is going to change. See, according to recent United Nations population survey, at the current rate of population growth, India will move over China in population in the coming year, that is 2023. The article says that it is a rare example of a global ranking where India sits higher than China. This point has been made because other than this, in majority of all other spheres of comparison, India stands second to China. For example, take GDP. See, China is the world's second biggest economy, while India is in the fifth position. This is about the population. Now, let's move back in history. We all know that India gained independence in the year 1947, while China with its present-day political system emerged as a republic nation two years later, that is from 1949. The establishment of India as a multi-party electoral democracy with a free media was different from that of China. See, China under the leadership of Mao Zedong was an autocratic country with single party system and there is no free media. With this contrasting political systems being adopted by the two neighbors, the economic policies of both the countries during their immediate years of formation were relatively same. Both looked up to socialist model of development with China relying more on communism. See, this communist economic model went into scrutiny for the first time in China after the death of Mao Zedong. Deng Xiaoping, who was the successor of Mao, implemented reforms which opened up the economy. See, this was done in later half of 1970s. The reforms carried out by Deng and his allies gradually led Chinese economy to move away from redundant Maoist ideologies to market-based capitalist one. It opened Chinese economy to foreign investments and technology. Then Chinese vast labor force was introduced to the global market, thus turning China into one of the world's fastest growing economies. Now coming to the economic reforms which took place in India, see India opened up its economy only in the year 1991. And this was the year the LPG reforms were introduced in India. From this, we can find parallels between India and China in its economic policies. That is, both countries started with a socialist economic system and subsequently changed into a market-based one. Only difference lies in the fact that China introduced reforms pretty earlier than its neighbor, that is India. See, the 15 years time gap may look like a short time, but this has helped China in garnering over the manufacturing space for the whole of the world. Here, the author of the article quotes the data that Chinese economy had grown nearly over 10% year-on-year over the last decade of the 20th century. And this has resulted in China becoming the second largest economy. Today, China's per capita GDP rate is around 9,000 US dollars a year. But what is the case with India? See, India's per capita GDP rate is around 2,000 US dollars only. 
and this is about the history and economic progress of india and china now moving on to see about the lessons which india need to learn from china the author of the article is of the opinion that china's economic growth was made possible because of its stress on education so the author wants india to learn from china and increase its spend on social sector schemes here let me quote a data see china nearly spends 2.7 percentage of its gdp on research and development while the number for india is very low which is at 0.7 percentage see the countries which currently spend more on research and development as future prospects of better return and this is why india need to increase its spend on social sector schemes and this is about the points that india need to learn from china now coming to the final part of the discussion the author of the article says that the actions of both china and india will shape asia in the next decade owing to the economics and population of the current day both the asian neighbors are on the path of supremacy but the current global order is not providing conducive platform for both the countries to work closer see alliances like us led quad are providing problem to both the india and china and the author ends the article by saying that both the nations need to work closely to ensure greater good for the global society and that's all regarding this discussion In this discussion we saw about the comparison of population between india and china then about the history and economic progress of india and china and we saw about the lessons which india need to learn from china and finally we saw some of the views of the author now with these key points in mind let's move on to the next news article discussion now have a look at this news article it says that the number of journalists jailed around the world has touched a record high it is reported that as of december 1 2022 363 reporters were deprived of their freedom this data is as per the 2022 prison census released by the committee to protect journalists know that the committee to protect journalists is a non profit organization that promotes press freedom worldwide and this is the crux of the news article given here using this article as an opportunity let us see the important points mentioned in the committee to protect journalists report as we already saw this report is the 2022 prison census released by committee to protect journalists we call shortly this as cpj as per the report this year's figures of 363 reporters or takes last year's record by 20 percentage and the report is saying that this marks another grim milestone in a deteriorating media landscape now let us see some facts given in the report firstly according to the report the top 5 jailers of journalists of this year include iran china myanmar turkey and belarus respectively and they are categorized as worst offenders in the report secondly the report also stated that there is a key driver behind the authoritarian governments effort to stifle the media now what is the key driver it is nothing but the intention to subsume the discontent in the world now you may have a doubt why there is discontent in the world see the discontent is because of the disruption caused by covid-19 and the economic fallout from russia's war on ukraine thirdly the cpj's data highlighted another theme it is nothing but the ongoing repression of minorities as per the report in iran kurds have been affected the most it is said that at least 9 kurdish journalists are among those in jail in turkey authorities arrested at least 25 kurdish journalists likewise in china many imprisoned journalists are ethnic uyghurs from xinjiang province and fourthly the report highlights that the means by which the authoritarian leaders curtail the press freedom i will give you some examples from the report it includes imprisoning the journalists using tactics like fake news laws see these vaguely worded legislation are used to criminalize journalism by doing this the authoritarian governments are ignoring the rule of law and abusing judicial system and the final example is exploiting technology to spy on reporters and their families this is about the examples that are mentioned in the report now finally let's see some of the india specific information see as per the cpj report seven journalists are in jail in india this is a record high for the second consecutive year since cpj began its prison census in 1992 
as per CPJ, India is drawing criticism because of its treatment of the media. Particularly, India is receiving criticism for the use of preventive detention law, that is the Jammu and Kashmir Public Safety Act. Apart from this, anti-terrorism law such as Unlawful Activities Prevention Act is also used to charge the journalists. Know that 6 out of the 7 jailed journalists are investigated or charged under this law. And this is about India specific information as mentioned in the report. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw about a report that was released by Committee to Protect Journalists and the report name is nothing but Prison Census. And we also saw some facts given by the report and finally we saw about India specific information. With these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next part of the news article discussion that is to discuss preliminary practice questions. Now look at this first question. The question is regarding Interstate Water Disputes Tribunal. Now let's take up the first statement. The Krishna Water Disputes Tribunal was the first Interstate Water Disputes Tribunal to be set up in India. See this statement is correct. Yes, the first Interstate Water Dispute Tribunal that has to be set up in India is Krishna Water Disputes Tribunal. See it was set up in the year 1969. So statement 1 is correct. Now coming to the second statement, the decision of the tribunal are binding on the state governments. Yes, this statement is also correct. As we saw in the discussion, the tribunal's decision are same as Supreme Court's order or decree. So it is binding on the state governments. So statement 2 is also correct. Now the question is asking for correct statements. So the answer for the question is option C both 1 and 2. Moving on, let's take up the second question. See it is a previous year prelims question that was asked in 2019 UPSC civil services exam prelims. And this question is regarding particularly vulnerable tribal groups in India. Now look at this first statement. PVTGs reside in 18 states and one union territory. See this statement is correct. As per the data of Ministry of Home Affairs, the PVTGs reside in 18 states and one union territory. So statement 1 is correct. Now coming to the second statement, a stagnant or declining population is one of the criteria for determining PVTG status. Yes, this statement is also correct. There are certain criteria. I will tell you. Kindly make note of it. Firstly, a pre-agricultural level of technology. Secondly, a stagnant or declining population. Thirdly, extremely low literacy. And finally, economic backwardness. See, these four criteria are followed for determination of PVTGs. So, statement 2 is correct. Now, coming to the third statement, there are 95 PVTGs officially notified in the country so far. See, this statement is wrong because the Ministry of Home Affairs have been categorized only around 75 tribal groups as PVTGs. But here in the statement, it is given as 95. So, this statement is wrong. Now, coming to the fourth statement, Irular and Kondarati tribes are included in the list of PVTGs. Yes, this statement is correct. They were included in the list of PVTGs. So, statement 4 is correct. Now, the question is asking for correct statement. So, the answer for the question is option C, 1, 2 and 4. Moving on, now let's take up the third question. See, it is match based question. One side G A tagged products is given and another side the state is given. And we have to find how many pairs are correctly matched. Now look at this first pair, Tamanglong Orange, Manipur. This is correct. The GI tagged Tamanglong Orange belongs to Manipur. Now coming to the second pair, Chamba Chappal, Himachal Pradesh. Actually this is also correct. It belongs to Himachal Pradesh only. Thirdly, Tandur Red Gram, Andhra Pradesh. See this statement is wrong. As we saw in the discussion itself, the Tandur Red Gram belongs to Telangana and not Andhra Pradesh. So, third pair is wrong. Now, coming to the fourth pair, Yadayur Chilli, Kerala. This is also correct. Yadayur Chilli belongs to Kerala state. So, how many pairs are correctly matched? Only three pairs. So, the correct answer for the question is option C, only three pairs. Moving on, let's take up the final question. See, it is also pair based question. One side, the region where the conflict occurs is given. On the other side, the countries involved in the conflict is given. We have to find what are all the pairs are correct. Now look at this first pair. 
நாகோர்னோ கரோபேக் அர்மேனியா அண்ட் அசர்பைஜான் ஆக்சுவலி திஸ் பேரிஸ் கராக்ட் சி த நாகோர்னோ கராபேக் கான்ஃபிளிக்ட் இஸ் த லாங் ரன்னிங் ஒன் இன் போஸ்ட் சோவியட் யுரேஷியா இன் நைன்டீன் எயிட்டி எயிட் அர்மேனியன்ஸ் லிவிங் இன் நாகோர்னோ கரோபேக் அட்டானமஸ் ஆப்ளாஸ்ட் ஃப்ரம் சோவியத் அசர்பைஜான் டு அர்மேனியா as the soviet union collapsed tensions grew into an outright war when fighting ceased in 1994 nagorno karabakh and seven adjacent districts were wholly or partially controlled by armenian forces and from 1994 until now intermittent deadly incidents drone attacks and special operations by forces are happening in the region here the conflict is between armenia and azerbaijan only so first pair is correct now let's take up the second pair Falkland Islands, Argentina and Britain. See, this pair is also correct. See, the isolated and sparsely populated Falkland Islands is a British overseas territory in the southwest Atlantic Ocean. It remains as the subject of sovereignty dispute between Britain and Argentina. They both waged a brief war over the territory in 1982. See, Argentine forces landed on the Falklands for territorial claim, but they were ejected by British military task force. Argentina says it has a right to the islands because it inherited them from Spanish crown in the early 1800s. It has also based its claim on the islands proximity to the South American mainland. Britain rest its case on its long term administration of the Falklands and on the principle of self determination of the islanders. Know that almost all of the islanders are of British descent. So the second pair is correct. Now coming to the third pair parcel islands china taiwan and vietnam see this statement is also correct as we all know this is very famous one we all know that china taiwan and vietnam have attempted to reinforce their claims on the territory they are doing it by the construction of government administrative buildings tourism land reclamation initiatives and by establishing and expanding military presence on the islands so pair 3 is also correct Now the question is asking for correctly matched pairs. So the correct answer for the question is option D, 1, 2 and 3. And this is the quiz question for you today. I will post this quiz question in a community section. Try to answer it. And displayed here are the main questions for your practice. Go through the questions, write your answers and post it in the comment section. With this we come to the end of the video. If you liked our analysis, please like, comment and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.